Hey, this is a par 64 guy and when you spend a lot of time at home, mainly due to a pandemic quarantine, you start looking at projects that you haven't uh, taken care of in quite some time. Well, here's one. We got a little malfunction here. You know, it's a little bit of a flakiness in the switch. Just kind of got put aside and said, yeah, I'll get to it later. Well, now's a good time for that later to be now. So let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. I found this diagram online which shows pretty much everything you need to know as to why a lamp is wired the way it is. The outer shell can be touched when changing a light bulb, so it is critical that it be tied to the neutral side of the power system. Note that we are talking about North American power where one side is typically the hot or side energized with AC voltage, and the other is the neutral, which is typically tied back to earth ground at the breaker panel. Also note that properly made lamp cords will have some sort of indication such as ridging to denote the neutral conductor. This corresponds to the wider blade of the plug, which is designed that way to ensure it can be inserted into the outlet only one way. Terminals are also typically color coded with the hot being brass and the neutral being silver. Note also that the lamp cord should have a knot called an underwriter's knot typically located inside the socket. This serves as a strain relief that prevents the wires from being pulled out from the terminal screws. Let's start by taking the lampshade off. Squeeze these to take this off. I just want to show you a quick difference between a three way and a normal. So a three-way bulb, you notice here, has a second ring on the base of the bulb. It allows the socket to put power into one electrode, the other electrode, or both, to give you three different levels of brightness. A regular standard on-off light bulb, you'll see here there's only one electrode on the bottom. The same goes for the socket. You'll see that there is a central electrode, which is common to a normal on-off socket. You have your outer connection, and then here on the three-way is this extra connection right here. And that's gonna give you that connection to that outer ring. You have two options here. First, if just the electrical socket needs replacement, you can simply do the steps to remove the old one and wire in the new one. For this video, I will show replacement of the whole socket assembly in the event yours is cracked, dented, or otherwise broken and needing replacement. As you can see, I picked up another socket, and I'm going to go with just a regular on-off style. You know, we don't really need the three-way. I'm going to switch this over to a, an LED style bulb anyway. For complete socket replacement, remove the retaining screw. Some lamp sockets unscrew like this one while others may pop apart like this. Gently pull the socket up to expose the terminals and loosen the terminal screws to remove the wires. So I'm gonna loosen this. At this point, you can skip ahead to attach the replacement socket if just replacing the electrical portion. Untie the underwriter's knot and straighten out the wires. To remove the socket base cap, which is usually screwed to the lamp by way of a threaded rod, you may need to secure the rod while unscrewing the cap. I found on this lamp that the manufacturer must have used adhesive to secure the cap so removing it was, shall we say, challenging. Attempts to unscrew the cap also unscrewed the whole threaded rod assembly and loosened the upper lamp section. So I had to tighten it back up and then use some gentle persuasion to get the cap to budge. Obviously use caution if your lamp has glass or ceramic components. Your particular lamp may also not have a cap that screws on. So take your time and examine it carefully. Okay. 
Before installing the new socket, check the wires for cracks or other damage. Okay, so next thing now is we have to take this apart. So the instructions say to press where indicated. Of course, it doesn't really say, <laughs> there's no mark that says press here. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's where the slots are because that's gonna allow the socket to compress a bit. Okay. So there is a cardboard insulator in here and a line around here that we do not want to lose. So first things first, we'll feed the wires through. Actually, you know what? I want to loosen this screw up. I don't want to be dragging these wires past that screw. It appears they must use some adhesive on here. Uh, I would probably try to clean it off with a wire brush. Since I can't find a, a small wire brush, um, I do have a pipe cleaning one for sweating pipe. And let's see if this does the trick. That's definitely going on a lot easier. Just want to get on enough where that set screw can grab. And I'd say that's probably good. So we'll just take and tighten that down just so this doesn't unscrew itself. Loop the wires into an underwriter's knot and tuck them into the socket. Now we're gonna to want to take the socket. We're gonna push it out. Again, don't lose this cardboard. When connecting the wires, be sure to secure the plain wire to the brass and ridged or marked wire to the silver. If unsure, measure which wire is which with an ohmmeter. Always want to wrap it clockwise, which is in the direction that the screw is going to turn when it tightens, so that way it'll help encourage the wire to continue to wrap. Otherwise, it'll push the wire off as you go to tighten it. Snug it down. Sneak that wire in underneath. Get it wrapped around. And tuck, snug it down. I'm not really cranking it down, I'm just going a little gentle. Kind of holding the screwdriver loose. And then when the screwdriver starts to slip in my hand, I know it's tight enough. You don't want to over torque these. So. There we go. So now we'll take this, slide it over. Make sure to keep that cardboard in place. Cardboard is there to help insulate this so you don't have a short against the metal. And then we're gonna just slide this down and pop it into place. Last, we'll take our thread knob, put that on. That should be it, and let's do a quick test. One of the things I'll also do sometimes is a sanity check one more time.
neutral. And let's just check for a short. Nope, good. And replace the shade. So that was a quick and easy project to uh, restore some new life into an old lamp that uh, otherwise probably would have had to go in the trash. Uh, for a few bucks, I was able to buy a new socket and replace it. Again, always know your limits. If you're not comfortable with something, don't try to do it unless you want to do some research first and figure out. Then if you realize it's in your limits, go for it. And by all means, always make sure that you're doing things with safety in mind. So if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button down there. Give me a like, give me a comment so what you think I could do better or other projects you'd like to see me do. And I read every comment and I definitely look forward to reading yours. Thank you again for watching. This is Part 64 Guy. See you later.